and thank you all for being here. Let me share my screen. So the title of my talk today is going to be is uh, let's use delays in adaptive control, and uh, I would like to convince you all that it's good to use delays in adaptive control. And uh, what I'm going to show you is very much related to input to state stability and input to output stability. So that is why this talk is taking place in this seminar series. Uh, this is joint work with Alexandros Aslanidis. You can see him uh, on the right. And uh, me and Miroslav, we can see, you can see us on the left of the screen. And uh, let, me let me start by saying a few things about the intentional use of delays in control. So sometimes con uh, delays can guarantee some features which cannot be guaranteed by delay-free controllers. And uh, I personally discovered this thing in, uh, when I, f I read uh, Silvius' book that you can see here, uh, where Silvius presents some uh, cases where delays offer new features for controllers. And then uh, this paper by Engel and Kreiselmeier, which provides a continuous time observer for linear system, which converges in finite time, was uh, a revelation to me. Uh, it showed me that uh, delays can do a lot of things that perhaps delay-free systems cannot do. And Later on, uh, I wrote these two papers about the use of delays uh, in controllers. And uh, many years later, I and uh, Miroslav thought about uh, using delays in adaptive control. And we came up with uh, a hybrid delay scheme which was uh, regulation triggered, event triggered by uh, means of the, uh, of the regulation error. And uh, we tried to, in, to prove results about that, about this control scheme. And uh, we actually, we have been able to prove that uh, delays can offer new features in adaptive control. But in these two papers, we use delays in a hybrid way. And let me explain the idea a little bit for this simple system. This is the simplest system, a scalar system. So we have only one unknown parameter, constant parameter, which is theta. The idea is if you multiply the differential equation by x of t and you integrate, you get this. Uh, equation. But now you can solve for theta. And you can uh, obtain this parameter estimate. And this parameter estimate is going to be an exact estimate of the parameter. So by using delays, you can have an exact estimate of the parameter. OK. You can use such an estimate in a event trigger fashion or a sample data fashion. And you can even use um, a certainty equivalence uh, controller and obtain such a controller as you can see for the closed loop system, for, the, uh, for this simple system. The closed loop system is going to imitate to follow the trajectory 
of the nominal controller. Eh? And uh, by nominal controller, I mean the controller which uses the exact value of the parameter, theta. So this is a very big uh, improvement in adaptive control. But then we, Miroslav suggested to show this result, this uh, particular result to an expert in adaptive control. And, and this uh, expert in adaptive control told us, okay, this is a very nice idea, but what happens when you have a disturbance? So you can see here, you, we have a, an additive disturbance, D of T, added to the differential equation. And uh, in this case, we cannot guarantee boundedness of the states. And uh, this uh, a very well-known problem in adaptive control, of course, we performed many simulations and the simulations were showed to us that uh, things uh, were great for the closed loop system, but still we could not prove boundedness of the stages. We could not prove robustness with respect to, uh, to the disturbance D. And this is, as I told you, is a very well-known problem. It arises even in standard nonlinear adaptive control. And that's why this expert told us, uh, asked us what happens when we have a, a disturbance. Let's see what happens in standard nonlinear adaptive control. Okay, <clears throat> this is an adaptive controller, which is uh, designed by using methodologies in the book by Christitz, uh, Kokotovic, and Kanelakopoulos. We assume here that the parameter theta is equal to three. And uh, you can see here the feedback law and the update law. Let us see what happens for this uh, adaptive controller. The adaptive controller works very nicely when you have no disturbance. You can see that the parameter estimate does not converge to the actual value of the parameter, theta. Remember, theta is equal to three. But we achieve perfect regulation of the state. So the controller works perfectly when there is no disturbance. But when there is a disturbance, when a disturbance is present, then here is the problem. You can see that the parameter estimate increases without bound. And this is of course, of course problematic. Let me explain why this happens. You can see here, oops, sorry. You can see here the update law. So the time derivative of uh, the parameter estimate is uh, always non-negative. So when X does not converge to zero sufficiently fast, this will uh, cause a constant increase in the parameter estimate. And that is ha what happens when you have a disturbance. The, uh, the state X, the plant uh, state, as is it, it is called in adaptive control, does not converge to zero. And this causes the parameter estimate to increase and increase without bound. So researchers in adaptive control have, uh, of course, I identified this problem many years ago and have proposed some solutions about this problem. One of the solutions that has been proposed in the literature is the so-called sigma modification or leakage. So the controller, the adaptive controller and particularly the update law is uh, modified by, by subtracting this term here, minus sigma times the parameter estimate theta half. And this term here 
will prevent this uh, increase without bound of the parameter estimate. Indeed, if you use this Lyapunov function here, then you can uh, show this estimate for the derivative of uh, this Lyapunov function. And this estimate guarantees input to output stability. Input to output stability with respect to the plant state X. You can see here that there is this term that shows the uh, impact of the disturbance to the plant state. But there is also this term here, which shows that we do not achieve exact input to output stability, but we rather achieve practical input to output stability. So X converges in a neighborhood of zero, and this neighborhood of zero has radius equal to this quantity shown here. Now, this is a problem. This is the so-called residual set. And there is a problem here because the radius of the residual set, as you can see, is proportional to the absolute value of theta. And since theta is not known, we do not know how large will, is going to be the radius of the residual set. So this may be a big problem. On the other hand, you can see that we can achieve exponential co convergence of uh, the state in the delay in the input of free, in the disturbance free case. And we can even assign the gain of the disturbance by two, by selecting the, para the parameters of the controller. So th there are some good features here and perhaps some body features here, but let me show you what happens. So <clears throat> even in the disturbance-free case, we can see that the, st the plant state fails to converge to zero. Because, because of the radius of the residual set. You can see that the plant state converges to a value close to 0 0.3, which is not good in this case. And uh, again, the parameter estimate does not converge to, uh, to the actual value of the parameter which remember was equal to, is equal to three. So we don't have a very nice performance, even for the disturbance-free case. Now, what happens when we have a disturbance? Here is the, the strength of uh, sigma modification. You can see that the parameter estimate remains bounded, but still the plant state does, does not approach uh, zero. It oscillates rapidly around 0 0.3. So when the parameter is large, we, ha uh, we, we will have problems with the performance of the system, of the closed loop system. And uh, this is a very well known problem to all people working in adaptive control, but you cannot do otherwise because you have somehow avoid the, the fact that uh, the parameter estimate is not bounded when there is a disturbance. Okay, so we started thinking about this uh, problem and we said, uh, okay, can we somehow modify our hybrid delay scheme and uh, make, robustify the controller and guarantee robustness for the closed loop system? And by robustness, I mean uh, 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 an input to state or input to output stability property. <clears throat> okay, so 
let us take for the parameter estimate, the exact parameter estimate, which is exact when the disturbance is absent. It is not exact when the, the disturbance is present. Okay, let us use now a certainty equivalence version of the controller, and we get this controller. And we can start seeing some major issues arising here. What are these issues? Well, first of all, we can see that U of T depends on the history of U. So U is not an input anymore. U will become a state for the closed loop system. And this is going to give us not a conventional delay system. Because you can see here, we have no derivative of U on the left-hand side of this equation. This is going to give us a, what is called in the literature, a neutral delay system. The second thing is that you can see here that we divide it with the two norm of the state, eh? the squared two norm of the state, but this can be zero. Eh? So this feedback law is not continuous. It's not even locally bounded. So we will have severe problems for well posedness of the closed loop system. So we need somehow to modify this feedback controller. <coughs> okay. So we said, even by looking at this simple system and forgetting about the hybrid nature of the controller, and everything, we encounter very, very big issues and very important mathematical problems. So let's focus on this simple system and let's see, and let's try to resolve these issues for this simple system. And of course, try to forget everything about a hybrid a implementation of the controller. We want to robustify the scheme. Huh? Okay, so this is the controller that we talked about. First thing here is, okay, we can take the positive part of this numerator. This is going to give us an even higher, higher gain for the controller. Okay, this is not a big issue here. But we have to add something to the denominator in order to be able to guarantee that the denominator is not zero. And uh, what should we add? That uh, took us uh, a, lo a long time in order to be able to find what we should add in the denominator. So, we ended up with this term that we should add this term here where epsilon is a positive parameter of the controller. And then we also used a nonlinear damping term as we did for the, for the conventional adaptive controller. But this time this nonlinear damping term is not optional. It plays a crucial role in uh, the proofs of the results that I'm going to show you. So this is the controller that we have thought of, the delayed adaptive control. And uh, we are going to implement this controller and see what happens. And we can also get uh, as a bonus an identifier. Now the identifier can work completely in parallel with the controller. So the parameter estimate 
coming from the identifier is not used in the control. And uh, look what we are doing for the identifier. We say that if the two norm of the solution is above a certain threshold, which we call this threshold sigma, then we can use the exact estimate. The exact estimate is not going to be far away, even in the case where we have when we have disturbances. Otherwise, if the solution is less than this threshold, is the solution norm is less than this threshold, then we simply do not update the parameter estimate. We keep the parameter estimate constant. That is the identifier that we are thinking, uh, we have thought of. And this, uh, as I told you, may work in parallel with the controller. Eh? You can use, even use this identifier even with different uh, with uh, uh, different uh, adaptive controllers. Okay, so let us see now what the closed loop system looks like. So the closed loop system looks like this. You can see you, we have one differential equation and one algebraic equation for the state U. Remember now U is a state for the closed loop system. And uh, we have to think about existence, uniqueness uh, of solutions for this system. We tried uh, to search the literature in order to find the existence, uniqueness results about such neutral delay systems. This is a neutral delay system, not in Hale's form. So we had to look uh, carefully in the literature. We could not find any existence uniqueness result if we assumed that the, the disturbance is measurable, simply measurable. We could find some existence uniqueness results, but under the assumption of continuous disturbance. So we thought, okay, let's try and uh, prove our own results here. We do not want to make uh, this assumption that the disturbance is continuous. And we considered as a state as the state space, this space here. Notice that X belongs to this Sobolev space. Huh? Okay. And then we are able to prove this theorem. This theorem says for any value of the parameter theta, for any initial condition in the state space, and for every measurable and essentially bounded disturbance. There is a solution which is defined up to a maximal existence time. Now, if the maximal existence time is bounded, if we, if we have a, a finite escape time, then necessarily the state will blow up. And more, more uh, specifically, the U component of the state of the closed loop system will blow up. So for, for people who are uh, familiar with system theoretic uh, notions, this is uh, the bounded implies continuation property. So if the solution is bounded, then it exists for all times. Our second result is the main result, which uh, gives, uh, which explains what happens in the closed loop for the closed loop system. Okay, you can see here that we are able to guarantee this input to output stability estimate for the plant state. 
again the 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 KEL function that is involved in this estimate is exponential with respect to time. We can uh, we can have we can have assignment of the asymptotic gain of the disturbance d, and as previously as in the sigma modification case, this is not an exact input to output stability, but it is a practical input to output stability property. So there is a radius epsilon shown here for the residual set. But remember, this epsilon is a parameter of the controller now. So we can assign the radius of the residual set. Remember, before with the sigma modification, we had no control on the radius of the residual set. It was proportional to the absolute value of the parameter. Here we have absolute control of the radius of the residual set. Moreover, we can guarantee an, an input state stability estimate even for the state for the state component u. But this time the uh, gain of the disturbance is nonlinear as, as you can see. And this time the, the radius of the residual set depends on theta. But remember, x is the, the variable that we want to regulate. Eh? So this matters to us very much. This is okay. It's not so important for adaptive control. Let, let us see the comparison here between the sigma modification and uh, the delayed adaptive control. You can see here, this is the radius of the residual set in the sigma modification while here is this epsilon, the radius of the residual set. And this epsilon is a parameter of the controller, something that we can select a priori. The rate of the convergence is completely assignable. C is a parameter of the controller and the asymptotic gain of the disturbance is again completely assigned. But this again holds also for the sigma modification. Now let us see what happens with the identifier. So we have this theorem which says that if there exists a time for which the two norm of the state be becomes greater than this threshold sigma, then there is a finite time for which this estimate holds. So you can see here, we are going to have an error in our parameter estimate. And, and this error is gonna be proportional to the magnitude of the disturbance. Of course, if the disturbance is absent, this error is going to be zero. Eh? So we are going to have exact identification. But see here, we have a trade-off between learning and robustness. So if sigma is large, then we have robustness. The gain of the disturbance will be small but then it becomes less likely to satisfy this condition. So it is more difficult to learn in this case when you have high learning standards. On the other hand, if sigma is small, then this becomes much more likely, but then you pay the price. You will have a large gain for the disturbance for the, of the parameter error. 
So there is a trade-off here between learning and robustness. So let me show you what happens for the closed loop system when the delayed adaptive controller is being used. Let me show what happens here when the disturbance is absent. First of all, you can see that the disturb the parameter estimate converges to the exact value of the parameter. And this convergence happens in finite time, as predicted. Now, what about the plant state? The plant state is regulated and is regulated very nicely. But see here, there is a small error. The parameter, the plant state does not converge exactly to zero. So there is a residual, a small residual set. For this simulation, here epsilon was set 0 0.01. And you can see here in this simulation that uh, the plant state converges to a neighborhood of zero of radius 0 0.01. But otherwise, it, it works very nicely. Now, what, let us see what happens when the disturbance is present. Okay. First, there is an error in the parameter estimate. Notice that an, a disturbance of magnitude equal to 2 produces an error of 0 0.5 in the parameter estimate. This is better than all parameter estimates that we have seen for standard adaptive controllers so far, even in the, the disturbance-free case. Eh? OK, and let us see now what happens to the plant state. So you can see that the, here we have uh, uh, a very nice uh, behavior of the plant state. Actually, we have uh, an even better behavior. You can see that the disturbance is somehow rejected almost completely. And uh, the, the plant state converges to a radius of, uh, to a residual set of radius epsilon, even in this case. <laughs> so the, the simulation results are even better for our adaptive controllers. So here we have somehow managed to uh, alleviate the effect of the disturbance. And uh, this gives us hope that uh, we can uh, achieve much more things. So let me let me uh, uh, conclude now and say that I showed you some results for a very simple uh, system, and uh, these results show show to us that we can achieve many features that cannot be achieved by other controllers in adaptive control. And these features can be achieved by using delays. So in our opinion, it is perhaps a good idea to consider uh, delays for adaptive control systems. Now, as you, as you saw, even in this simple system, we had to generate new mathematical results. It's not a trivial thing to just go and add some delays to the adaptive controller. So the closed loop system needs to be studied almost from scratch. I mean, from a mathematical point of view, from a simulation point of view, the simulations are not difficult to be obtained. But from a mathematical point of view, in order to be able to prove input to output stability and uh, similar properties, practical input to output stability, you need 
to generate new mathematical results. So I hope that I convince you that at least for some kinds of systems, there is going to be a lot of benefit by using delays in adaptive controllers. The question that, that come to mind, to the minds of, of all of us, I guess, is that can we generalize this scheme to wider classes of non-linear systems? We just saw this scheme for a, just a simple scalar system. Can we generalize it to other class of, class of systems? Well, this is an open question. We are studying this question. It's not gonna be easy. It's not, I, 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 we cannot answer this question uh, uh, very easily. Okay, will we be able, a second question, to achieve all these nice features that we saw for these wide classes of nonlinear systems? Well, that is the objective. <laughs> but again, we cannot be sure about that. So these are open questions. We have to study these questions. And that's what we are doing right now. But one thing that can be said for sure is that delays have many things to offer in adaptive control. And that, I think, I proved it to you. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And I would be happy to answer to any question that you'd like.